Now in today's training, we're gonna discuss the ball flight on the ball toss. Very, very important factor. Now, why is it so important? For right-handed players, this is just a general briefing of it. What you'll see is the ball, after they release, the ball will move in a slight right to left fashion through the air, okay? Very, very important that you see that slight right to left movement. Why? Why is it so important? If we look on the contrary, you sometimes see players that have more of a straight up and down ball toss. So the ball moves up in a straight up and down line. Now the reason that's a problem, if you have a straight up and down ball toss, you're too frontal with the upper body. You haven't really coiled the body segments. So if it looks like this, if I have a straight up and down, look at where my chest is pointing. It's pointing forward. However, getting that slight right to left movement on the ball toss means that you're turning the shoulders slightly away from the target. And when you do this, you're beginning now to coil the shoulders against the hips. And this is a critical factor for power on the serve also. But by turning the shoulders, it results in this ball moving slightly right to left. It's a very, very important factor. Now, obviously there are variant degrees to this, to what will work. Some players like Federer will turn to a point where the toss and arm will be parallel with the baseline. Now, I find that this is very difficult to control for players. So what you may find instead is you just turn to where the toss and arm points at approximately a 45 degree angle to the net. And that will be plenty enough. You'll still get the slight right to left movement and you're so still gonna be engaging the upper body. But what we'll do now, I'll go into a slow motion uh, analysis here, just so you can see it in more detail, and then we'll get into the train along. So now let's take a look at this uh, right to left movement with the ball toss in super slow motion. And the first apparent thing you're gonna see is as I'm initiating the service action, look at how my upper body now is starting to turn away from the target. So my target obviously is to the service box, but look at where my body is now pointing. It's really turning away. And this right here, there are variant degrees to how far you turn away. It is different for every player. Now, obviously myself, I'm turning to a point where my toss and arm is in line with the baseline. Now that can be very challenging because players then have problems getting the ball going into the court from here. So if this is too much for you, what you can do, you can just turn to a point where the arm is pointing at a 45 degree angle into the court. So it'll be pointing roughly towards the right net post. That will be plenty enough in terms of turning away. Now let's look at the ball flight, how the ball moves throughout the air. So I'm releasing the ball here. I'll make a mark now where the ball is being released. So it's there. Now watch how the ball moves. You can see it already. You can see how it's slightly moving right to left, but look at where I'm now contacting the ball there. I'm gonna put in another marker. And you can see now visibly how it's moved right to left in that arcing manner. Now, if I didn't contact this ball, the ball would continue to fall down to the left side in this direction, but I'm cutting the ball off in its path because I have to make contact. But this is something you'll see with all the best players. You'll see this right to left movement of the ball toss. If you don't see it, then that tells you that you haven't really engaged the shoulders. You have more of a straight up and down ball toss, and that can really cause issues because you're not gonna maximize your power anymore by doing that. So that's a good visual idea now of what it looks like in super slow motion. Now what we'll do is get into a train along where we'll work on this in more detail. So now let's get into the train along where we work a little bit on this ball flight and the concept of turning the shoulders away from the target. The first progression that I wanna do, it gives you the feeling of turning the shoulders away. All I want you to do is you can do this in the comfort of your own home, but I want you to set up an open stance. So the feet will be parallel here with the baseline. And then what you're gonna do, I want you to turn the shoulders away like this. And I just want you to toss the ball. So start low, toss the ball and hold. And by doing this, you're really gonna start to feel that the shoulders are turning past the level of the hips because you're remaining in the open stance. And you'll also then start to see the ball will slightly start to move right to left. Providing obviously you have that clean release where you release at eye level. Let me show you a couple more. So open stance, turn and hold. And again, open stance, turn, hold. One more, open stance, turn the shoulders away, hold. So that's a very great way 
of turning the shoulders away from the target. That's progression one. So now that you've done progression one, where you're in the uh, open stance and you're turning the shoulders away, now what you can do is use a fence. And for this, I've just got a sign here, which I'm gonna use. However, if you don't have something like this, all you've got to do, swing up to contact here, and where you see your fully extended at contact, put something in the fence. You can put a ball there, you can put just tape there, whatever it may be, but you want the visual cue to where your contact point is. So as you can see, for me, I'm actually gonna be using this letter T here, okay? That's approximately where my contact point will be. Now, what you're gonna do from here, I want you to set up around one, one and a half feet away from the fence and set up on a point where you find your contact point where the T is gonna be roughly in line with my right hip and shoulder, approximately, okay? And now that I'm satisfied with that, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to toss the ball and the ball is gonna move like this. It's gonna move up on the right side and then if I do it correctly, the ball should fall down over the T. So the ball should go like this. It'll go up and then it'll fall down over that T. And then the ball, because it's moving right to left, it will continue to fall down to the left side. And that's what we want to try to achieve. So you wanna get that ball falling down over that mark. For me, it's gonna be the letter T. So let me do a couple here. Let me just set up. Just like that. There's one. Set up again. Okay, there, I released the ball a little bit too late. Let me make the adjustment. That's better. Do it again. Good, a little bit too early. So as you can see, by doing this, if you find the ball is falling too far down over the C, then you know you've released the ball too early. If it's going too far over to the R, too far over in this direction to the left side, you're releasing the ball too late. So you can play with the release point a little bit now. And do one more. Turn away. Just like that. So that's another great way. And I really highly encourage you that do as many of these as you can. When you're at home, just practice this over and over, day by day. And by doing this day by day, you're really gonna to start some, to see some significant improvements. So those are the two progressions just for today. Right now, we have a special trial of our OTI Digital Coach available for you. It not only gives you access to all our video courses and modules, but you will also receive your own personalized video analysis from one of our OTI certified instructors. Simply send us a video of the stroke of your choice during your trial and you will receive a voiceover video analysis with laser focused feedback on how you can transform that stroke into a real weapon. Simply click the link inside or below this video for all the details.